Because they rather say, give us $10 and take it. Give it to me. You know what's good, you didn't, honey? You grab it in a candle! The horse-drawn vendor may seem like a thing out of the past, a little out of place in a large city, but in Baltimore, these street peddlers have been a part of daily life for over a century. They are called A-Rabbers, and their colorful lifestyle and lore have passed through six generations. Very few children today appreciate what their family gives them. See, and I appreciate it today that I Arab that my mother brought me up the way I did. Everybody just don't have it. It's, you know, you, you got to be around it for a while to even get, get a hold of it, you know what I mean? The thing that I remember the most was my mother said, here comes the horsey. And as the wagon drew near and the man who was hollering, I realized it was my father. Most A-Rabbers learned this unique trade from their parents and grandparents. And at first, it seems that little has changed about this livelihood. In some neighborhoods, men and women with nicknames like Shorty, Man Boy, and Fatback are more famous than the city's own mayor. Hey, baby, how you doing, honey? Working from dawn to dusk, they sell their wares and produce door to door, announcing what is on their cart with a distinctive A-Rab holler. Get it, jump it! But today, the A-Rabbers carry more than an honest living on the back of their wagons. They also carry a tradition that is in danger of being lost and forgotten. I thought once upon a time it would be my son's business. But he went into internal decoration, you know what I mean, fixing houses and things. Five for a dollar, or you come through the window, huh? And a lot of times, you had elderly people that couldn't get around and do for themselves. And then we go and help them people. That was the glorious part of it. And up to day, up to the day, it's not so glorious. But they learned over a period of years that so much violence and things are going on. People scared to let people in the house because the world has changed so much. And you need apples. No, I don't need apples. You don't I, need I apples? Do. I do. Okay, apples. how many apples do you need? need? Although Roland Freeman gave up A-Rapping 40 years ago to become a photojournalist, he has never forgotten the lifestyle that has been in his own family for four generations. He has spent the last 20 years writing a book about a community that some people see as a menace to the city. Somebody driving home from work and in a hurry and there's an A-Rabber's wagon. All they know about is here's this horsey wagon that's slowing down the traffic. Yeah, yeah. For the past decade, the A-Rabbers have been victims of changing times and the targets of periodic campaigns to remove them from the streets altogether. Since Baltimore polished up its inner harbor and tourism trade, A-Rabbers have been banned from the very areas that were once their turf. Many of the stables have been closed as a part of Baltimore's urban renewal plan. But this last year alone has been the toughest for the A-Rabbers. The city says that they have received complaints about the merchants' treatment of their horses. In July, Baltimore passed a strict horse inspection and licensing law, which has put some of the A-Rabbers behind bars. I was home. Police come. One of my daughters says, police in there once. I was out in the yard. And I come back and say, what's, what's the problem? He said, we got a warrant for your arrest. I said, for what? Cruelty to Ireland. The lady that six charge of horses, Miss Vicky, that I think she's a fair woman. And I've seen animals abused, severely abused. And personally, it does, it breaks your heart. So maybe my tolerance level is a little low when it, when it, when it comes to folks who out and out abuse or neglect animals. And that I won't apologize for. And this piece is up here. This is for the protector's chest. As long as the air don't get down through there, he'll be all right. He's standing kind of tempted out here. That a rabbit out there with that horse in that same weather. You understand what I mean? And that horse is his livelihood, so he's going to take care of that horse. Don't somebody who don't know nothing about horses have to come up and tell him how to take care of his horse. He knows. He loves his animal. That's his livelihood. 
Today, a profession which once employed hundreds of people has dwindled down to a handful of Arabbers working out of the five stables left in the city. And for the first time in their history, these portable merchants may well be the final generation in a long line of Arabbing. Still, most of them believe that they can survive even the most hostile urban environment. And that as long as there is a Baltimore, the Arabbers' wagon will roll. Come to the wagon,